I'm Tomasz Zwolenski, and welcome to our product overview webinar on the whole portfolio of RF Elements products. Before we start, uh, let me just remind you that there is the mm, question and answer part in the webinar tool where I encourage you to, to write down your questions, which you can write anytime during the webinar. And if I notice them, we will answer them right on the spot because eventually this webinar is for you. And um, yeah, we're here to really clarify any questions you, you might have. So let's go to it. So our product range uh, covers antennas, integration platforms and brackets. But today we'll mainly speak about the antennas because obviously they are main product line and a little bit about the integration platforms at the end. So the product map you see shows our antennas organized according to the beam shape, connector interface and gain. So the beam shape is changing in a, in a vertical direction. Uh, so the symmetrical antennas are in the, the top two lines and the asymmetrical are below in the, uh, in the third line. And uh, in the horizontal direction, the, the gain is changing and increasing from left to right. So the antennas with the low gain are on the very left. And as you go progress to the right, the gain is increasing. But before we go to the antennas themselves, I will speak a little about the twist board and twist board adapters, which are displayed right here. And you know, understanding twist board will help you understand um, the overall advantages of, of that ecosystem compared to the traditional coaxial interface. So twist board is RF Element's own proprietary waveguide connector that connects the radio with an antenna. And it has two essential advantages. So first, because it is a waveguide connector, Twistboard introduces practically zero loss into the system, which is very important to achieve excellent RF performance and deliver the maximum power from the radio to the antenna and eventually providing the furthest possible coverage. The second advantage of the Twistboard is that it combines the radio mounting and RF connection into a single and easy to use interface. So it is extremely easy and safe to operate. And Twistboard is not only RF connector between the radio and the antenna, but actually it mounts you know, the radio on the antenna at the same time. So when you insert and twist the radio, it, it locks automatically and stays mounted. And unlocking uh, of the radio is equally easy. So you just twist, twist the outer ring of the, of the Twistboard on the antenna, reverse the movement and the radio is released. In our radio um, design, which we consider a sort of a reference, which we, which we set back in 2014, we removed the pigtails and integrated the transition uh, from the waveguide to the radio directly into the circuit board. So the radio can uh, then be attached to any twist board antenna while introducing practically unmeasurable loss. And this is why we consider Twistboard to be truly revolutionary interface, introducing a whole new ecosystem built on the advantages of the waveguide as a type of transmission line, and at the same time, also excellent mechanical design, which enables an easy connection with virtually zero loss RF performance. So the Twistboard adapter solves a very simple task of converting the coaxial radio interface of third-party radios into a twistboard mail interface. And it enables intuitive connection of both the radio and the antenna. And twistboard adapters are easy to use and have very low loss as well. Now you can see on the animation what's inside a typical twistboard adapter. Now the coaxial cables that are connecting the, the waveguide to the radio are connecting the waveguide to the radio. And these are high quality cables with semi-rigid shielding. So the cables are integrated in the antenna body. I mean in the adapter body, sorry. Because of that, you do not need to bend, connect, or disconnect the cables over and over. And this results into a very stable and lasting performance, really. So uh, the rest of the twist port adapter body is just designed to accommodate the most popular radios used 
in the WISP network, since most of the radios have different body shapes, we, we have a number of twist board adapters to fit them. And all the adapters I'll show you on the following slide are compatible with every twist board antenna. So you don't have to worry about you know, whether you will need a separate twist board adapter for each antenna. No, every twist board adapter fit, fits and works with any twist board antenna. So the twist port adapters have three types of connection at the side of the radio. First is the most common radio interface is a pair of SMA connectors. And the radios with coaxial output are connected to the corresponding adapter by simply sliding the radio in until you hear a click. So the second type is that you know, the few radios have a waveguide output and assembling a few parts together converts the third party waveguide output to twist port, twist port mail connector, as you see in this example. And finally, uh, many Microtech radios come as a bare PCBs without any enclosure, in which case you need to insert the whole PCB into the adapter to make it work. And it is important to emphasize and remember that the twist board adapter works, any twist board adapter works with any twist board antenna. The adapters are specific on the side of the radio. Yes, that's because of the different shapes of the third party radios. But on the side of the antenna, there is always the same twist board connector, which is compatible with any twist board antenna. So once you have the right adapter for your radio, you can be sure you're, you're all set and you can connect it with any twist board antenna you have. And we have twist board adapters for four uh, major radio brands in the WISP industry. So Cambio, Mimosa, Ubiquiti, and Microtik. And um, all of these adapters are really easy, easy to use and provide really reliable and, and safe radio installation and removal. So for Cambium, we have two adapters, the EPMP, TPA EPMP in the top line and the TPA adapter E2K in the bottom. So the one on the top is compatible with the, with the EPMP 1000 radios, both the client and the access point station, or obviously the newer EPMP 3000, which also has the client and the access point version. The TPA adapter for E2K is adapter is, is working with the EPMP 2000 as well as the uh, the newer EPMP 4400C, uh, which is the recently released 802.11ax radio from Cambio. For Ubiquity, we have four adapters. So the TPA path um, in the top uh, top left corner is compatible with the Rocket Prism 5AC. Uh, both first and second generation, and as well as the Air Fiber 5X and 5X HD, and also the newest LTU rocket. The, the TPA, uh, the twist port adapter for the ISO station in the, in the lower left uh, corner is compatible with the waveguide radios from Ubiquiti. So ISO station M5, Prism station, and ISO station 5AC. And we also have adapters for older Ubiquiti radios, such as Rocket M5 in the top right corner, and the Rocket 5 AC Lite you know, with the twist port adapter R5AC in the lower right corner. For Mimosa radios, we have three adapters. So the TPA C5C compatible with the Mimosa C5C radio. Then in the middle, the TPA C5X compatible with Mimosa C5X, which is a waveguide, uh, waveguide radio from, uh, from Mimosa. And for uh, Mimosa A5X, we also have a separate adapter called TPA A5X. And for those of you who are using the Microtech radios, we have two adapters. So TPA RBP, in the lower line, uh, which has a plastic body, and TPA RBC, which has a full metal body that offers a better protection of the radio from changing weather and the surrounding noise. And both of these are compatible with the router board 4, 7, and 9 series, as well as the M11. And finally, for those who prefer using twist port antennas with third-party radios, 
or you know for for uh, for which we might not have a custom fitting adapter we have connectorized twist port adapter available with two sma connectors to which you can plug any radio with coaxial output all be it a sma output or uh, or n connector output and since it's a lot to remember which twist port adapter fits with what radio, we have prepared a cheat sheet for you for a quick reference. Now you can download this cheat sheet for our, uh, from, our, from our webpage in the download section. It's a, it's a PDF and you can, you can either print it or, or just forward it to whoever, whoever needs the information and have to have it at hand. So horn sector antennas are by far the, the most effective technology to deal with RF noise in unlicensed networks. So let's have a detailed look at, uh, at how. So while the traditional sector radiates pretty much in every direction, which you see on the right side, on the animation on the right side, the horn radiates only in uh, the direction of the main lobe. Now, this is the essential advantage of horns. There's zero side lobes radiation pattern. Now, since side lobes collect and transmit the noise, getting rid, rid of the side lobes equals getting rid of the noise. But simply saying an antenna has zero side lobes is somewhat vague. It's like saying, well, I drove really fast instead of saying I drove 200 kilometers per hour or whatever the speed might be. Now, is there a measure of the amount of side lobes an antenna has? Yes, there is. It's beam efficiency. And it is the ratio of the energy contained in the main lobe to the total energy an antenna radiates. It's that simple. In other words, it says what part of the radiated energy is contained in the main lobe. And from that, uh, the, mean, meaning that the higher the beam efficiency is, the less side lobes an antenna has. So the maximum beam efficiency is 100%, which is the best case. And the closer the beam efficiency gets to 0%, the more side lobes an antenna has. Beam efficiency makes comparing two antennas in terms of silo performance extremely easy. The higher number wins. That's all. In this example, the symmetrical horn has beam efficiency of 94%. So only 6% of the power it radiates is in the side lobes. And a typical patch array sector has beam efficiency 69%. Yeah, so the remaining 31% of the energy it radiates is in the side lobes. And clearly 94% is more than 69% which uh, therefore the symmetrical horn is way better antenna in terms of noise suppression. And the rest of our horn sectors are no worse by any means. In fact, the average beam efficiency across all our horns is 93%. Ultra horn, for example, has beam efficiency of 99%, which makes it the best antenna in terms of noise suppression on the West market, in our opinion since it's really only 1% short of perfection in terms of noise suppression. So collocating increasing amount of patch array sectors is always problematic. You see a gradual decline of the network throughput and stability until you arrive at a point where even a single additional sector kills the site completely, which is uh, shown in the, in, in the right side of the animation. Now with horns, uh, this problem is practically non-existent. Now, the zero silo radiation pattern enables predictable dense collocations without any degradation of the network performance. Now, since they don't have any side lobes, they don't collect or transmit the noise in, the, uh, in its surroundings. And you can see that especially at highly uh, densely collocated sites. So how densely can you actually collocate horns? Uh, well, these images give you a very clear answer, really densely. So, so many sectors on one side are only possible when using horns. No traditional sector will let you do this kind of deployments. The maximum gain further illustrates um, the advantages of horns. So here you can see two curves. The red curve is almost... Um, uh, the, is, is, is like a little little hill, little hump. Yeah? And that's the, uh, the maximum gain of the traditional sector. 
and it tells us that its gain, its maximum gain, it changes drastically within the useful frequency band, which is really undesirable. While the green line is almost completely horizontal, and this is the maximum gain of uh, a horn uh, sector antenna. And that's exactly what you want from a sector antenna, because regardless what frequency you use, the gain is pretty much the same. So you can rely on the performance you're seeing while switching the channels. And the rest of the radiation pattern uh, with, uh, with horns is no different. Now, the frequency stability of the radiation pattern of horn is unmatched. Now you can see it changing a little bit with the frequency, but the resulting change of the coverage area is really negligible. And the frequency stability is a factor important for connection stability when, when changing channels again. And with horns, there's practically no change in the coverage throughput uh, throughout the useful spectrum. And most patch array sector antennas have many silos. And unfortunately, also the main lobe that changes with frequency. Now, there is, this results into, into the coverage that's fluctuating. So obviously perceived uh, throughout the sector, but especially by the customers at the edges of the sector as unstable throughput. And also the, the fact that the, the, the side lobes change their shape and direction throughout the spectrum influences uh, the spectrum you, know, you see at each frequency. You cannot rely uh, on uh, what you see for one frequency that it will be the same on another simply because these side lobes are changing directions and they see different things when you switch between the channels. Unlike any antenna technology on the market, RF element horns offer a unique tool set of 11 different antennas that really let you optimize the coverage you provide regardless of the customer density or distribution. So the denser sectors um, with, with, custo with customers really you know, densely packed in, in an area, the narrower beam width is what you want to use and vice versa. You know, the lower customer density areas are better covered with wider beam width horns. And all the favorable properties of horn technology enable unlimited scalability of the 5 gigahertz wireless networks because if a sector performs reliably and with minimum noise, and you can keep adding sectors without degrading the performance of those already in place, you have won, really. You can plan your network coverage with precision and with all the horns at hand, the sky is the limit on how big your network can be. And this is the core message of, of our technology, yeah, sustainable and fast wireless. Compared to the traditional battery sector antenna with a very narrow beam in the elevation plane, horns have a symmetrical or asymmetrical beam. So the symmetrical one means that it has the same width in elevation and azimuth. Yeah, an asymmetrical horn radiation pattern combines the best of of the horn technology and patch array sector world. So, which is the, the shape that of the main beam that is similar to the patch array with a narrower beam in the elevation plane, but at the same time, it has zero side lobes as all our horns do. Now with the traditional patch array sectors, it's hard to cover the areas near the site or below the site. With horns, uh, both symmetrical and asymmetrical, this problem is non-existent. Now, thanks to that extra beam width in the elevation plane horns offer, the coverage of areas near the tower is automatic, regardless of the landscape type. And this difference uh, is the most obvious in the mountainous areas, where the traditional patchery sectors, sectors really fail because of that narrow elevation beam width, but our horns do just fine, thanks to those extra degrees in the beam width in the elevation plane. Down tilt is a huge factor influencing the coverage area, at least with the patch array sectors. Now you can see that anything beyond a few degrees of down tilt makes the patch array practically useless. Now you completely lose the coverage of the distant areas and all, all that at a few degrees of down tilt, what is it, like five or six you know, or four even. Now with horns, the down tilt is an added functionality. The coverage area smoothly shrinks while maintaining its shape. So changing the down tilt, you can dynamically change the same sector coverage 
as you wish, as well as decrease the, the noise level. So the bigger the down tilt, the less noise you will see. The size of the horns makes their installation um, easy even on, on crowded sites and saves you the tower rental fees if, if you're really paying per antenna. And with, the, with, their, uh, with their size being a fraction of the traditional patch array sector, you can fit way more antennas in the same space. The 30 degree asymmetrical horn um, has a beam switch feature, uh, which means that by swapping the position of the handle and the bracket, the radiation pattern rotates by 90 degrees. So you switch from 30 degrees beam width to 20 degrees beam width in the azimuth. And that's in case you need to narrow down the sector you are covering. The beam switch basically makes these two antennas in one. Our brackets are extremely sturdy and simple at the same time. So we have, we have minimized the number of parts that are needed to mount our antennas, but there was absolutely no compromise to the strength of the attachment, uh, durability, and ease of use. So really, our brackets are made of massive uh, aluminum pieces, uh, and that large contact surface really ensures that the, the antenna is uh, attached to the tower in a very solid manner. And uh, uh, this, uh, this bracket also has black colored bolts. Yeah? And the black color is not just a coincidence or, or a choice of fashion, but um, the black, black surface signifies that they have anti-seize uh, surface coating on, on them. Meaning that uh, basically what it does, uh, that is that uh, it prevents the seizing of the bolts in the bracket. So they really extend the lifetime of the whole bracket as such. So you only need two bolts yeah, to mount the bracket. And after the aiming is aligned, yeah, which is also very simple. I mean, once you, once you put the antenna on, you simply rotate it uh, in the azimuth and elevation to the desired um, desired aiming and once that is done uh, you just need to fix a few bolts to to fix the position uh, it's really so easy to do and our antennas are built to last now we use a uh, high quality die cast stamped or extruded aluminium stainless steel and the UV resistant plastic. So you can deploy horns in all kinds of environments and weather conditions and with the knowledge and guarantee that they will last and endure the conditions they're, they're put into. Horns give you, give you the freedom you know, to use a suitable tool for any situation. Now, sometimes you uh, maybe not used to, you know, if, um, if, uh, if you've used mainly the traditional patchery sectors until now, you may not be used to have so many tools at hand. So take the example in the middle, for example, the, uh, the symmetrical horn uh, on the top for dense customer area because of its narrow beam width, and the asymmetrical horn on the bottom for less dense areas with the customers further apart and more away from the antenna. And then in the middle, our patchery sector uh, for a very low density. Um, customer base. Now, it's a wonderful use case of, of all three types of antennas we have. And super dense sectors, as you can see here, are absolutely no exception for horns. All these sectors provide excellent and stable performance, something that you can really achieve only with horns. Or vista narrow sectors with three ultra horns on the right side. Uh, the cluster deployments are simply effortless with horns. Since all we talked about until now is, is really a lot to remember, of course, you can always come back to the recording, but we also prepared a condensed one-page introduction to our technology, which you can download from our webpage in the download section. Uh, if you want to, for example, share the information with someone or print it out for yourself. And with horns, you have two options of radio connectivity. You can choose horns with twist port, 
which is our proprietary waveguide connector with practically zero loss and super easy installation and removal of the radio, which we talked to, uh, about until now. Or you may prefer the N female connector interface, which is a traditional coaxial interface for cases when some, for some reason, using twist port is not an option. The antennas are identical from the RF point of view with the same gain, same beam width, same frequency range, and so on. The only difference is in the connector interface. And coming to our horn accessories. So the twin horn bracket is, is a mounting bracket for two symmetrical horns of any beam width and for both the twist port and the carrier class connectorized version. The twin horn bracket comes with an improved mounting bracket and, um, and a comfortable handle, which you, can, which you can clip to a carabiner and to a harness when hauling it up the tower. So the twin horn bracket has two default options for radio mounting. The four channel uh, Cambium Networks EPMB3000 or Mimosa A5C. And the twin horn bracket makes high density sectors easy to align. Or it enables you to, to leverage 4x4 uh, MIMO setup. But we have to highlight that it does not work with the MU MIMO mode yeah, because the antennas are above each other. And you can also use twin horn bracket with, uh, with two radios and with port adapters yeah? and use one sector as a backup, for example. The, the bracket really gives you many options of how, how to use it uh, with headache-free alignment. So for complete uh, compatibility list uh, with, uh, you know, regarding which radios uh, with the adapters fit uh, or you, which, which you are able to mount uh, safely, you should uh, you should check the data sheet of the twin home bracket on our web page. And now let's have a look at our parabolic dish antennas. So the ultra dish is directional parabolic dish antenna with uh, with optimized side load performance. Now it comes in three sizes: so 21, 24, and 27, which uh, tells you about the, the the gain of these antennas. And they're available and sold in uh, in con convenient packs of two. So the radiation pattern of the ultra dish provides high gain that is needed for long distance links with suppressed side lobes for, for increased noise immunity. Now with dish type of antennas, uh, to completely avoid the side lobes is, is near to impossible. But what is possible and what we did here, we optimized the design of, of the ultra dish antennas to suppress the side lobes to to the to the degree possible, which results into into improved performance when compared to other competitive products of the similar category. Now, the improved performance is possible without the need to install any additional shields or shrouds, which are common in the WISP industry. And the frequency range of the ultra dishes spans the. Uh, the Uni 1 uh, to Uni 3 bands uh, first to hold 1300 megahertz of the spectrum to leverage with, with these antennas, which gives users uh, quite enough bandwidth to optimize their links as needed. So all three ultra dishes uh, have very stable gain over, over the whole bandwidth of operation. Now the difference between the horizontal and vertical polarizations is so small that the gain curves in the graphs are practically overlapping. So the balanced performance uh, between the, between the uh, polarizations is important for planning of a stable and reliable link. Because again, as you switch between the polarizations, you don't want to see any difference in the performance, which is exactly uh, what the ultra dish antennas provide. An ultra dish is suitable for, for areas with high surrounding noise levels. Now, typically those are most of the urban and suburban areas. So ultra dish delivers that highly focused beam that suppresses the surrounding noise. Now the cleaner radiation pattern, the ultra dish has also eliminates unwanted uh, connections to, to multiple access points. An ultra dish also has our improved UBR bracket 
with the black bolts for better protection from seizing and better grip on the tower thanks to the bigger contact surface. For the 27 DBI Ultra Dish, we have a rattle that protected from the outdoor elements, a you know, collection of snow and whatsoever. And at the same time, it also decreases the wind load a little bit. And the radon comes in the packs of 10. And here are some examples of the ultra dish deployments. Now, on our social media or other uh, WISP groups out there, you can see much more of these photos popping up. So horn sector antennas um, are by far the most effective technology to deal with RF noise. And we also have starter antennas, yeah, which is which is somewhat different uh, group of antennas compared to the Twistport series. So let's have a look at them. So the starter products include two access point antennas, the 30 degree symmetrical horn and 45 degree asymmetrical horn. And then there are three starter dishes for CPE applications, all in five gigahertz unlicensed band. And these products are ideal for WISPs that are new to RF elements products, or for those who are not ready to, to commit to our Twistboard ecosystem. And there are two essential points to, to be aware of compared to the Twistboard series. So first, the scalability of wireless network when using either one uh, product group. The starter products are only five, two access points and three CPE antennas. Now, these provide rather limited options of network design and optimization. Now, on the other hand, there are 14 Wisport antennas uh, with varying options of the beam width, uh, beam width angle gain uh, that provides a huge amount of combinations for and optimization options of, of your uh, network coverage. The second difference is the, con the connectivity options. And starter products don't have Twistport. So they offer the traditional RPSMA interface and lets you connect a few waveguide-based radios directly. Now, while the Twistport ecosystem uh, lets you get the most out of any radio you use with it. So the gain of these two antennas is similar. Yeah, there's only one dB uh, difference. Uh, the application scenarios differ a bit more. So the asymmetrical starter horn on the left is suitable uh, for mid-density access point applications due to that wider beam width in, in the azimuth, while the symmetrical horn is better for high-density access point applications thanks to that narrower beam. And starter horns are excellent access point antennas to replace batch array antennas with. So their high beam efficiency uh, ensures that you see very little noise and uh, that the service you provide to your customers is stable, reliable, and uh, that the customers get the throughputs they're paying for. So it really, the even starter uh, horns will let you leverage the, uh, the overall throughput potential of your radios much better. So the starter horns are made of high quality aluminum, stainless steel, and UV resistant plastic. Now, the mounting mechanism is a simple V-bolt bracket that has two installation options um, depending on the pole thickness. And it is identical yeah, with both the symmetrical and asymmetrical starter horn. You can connect any radio with coaxial output to the starter horns using the SMA adapter that is part of the antenna package. And disconnecting the radio, you can plug in the Ubiquiti waveguide radios directly, and that's without any adapter. And besides the wireless industry, we, we equally care about the planet. So we are increasingly using the recycled cardboard packaging and we're progressively getting rid of all the plastic packaging material whenever uh, we, we can. And these are the three start edition tennis. Um, they come in the, in the packs of five. 
which makes uh, uh, makes their shipping uh, very efficient. And they have the gain of 21, 24, and 27 dBi as well as the twist port ultra dishes. And the starter dish is a suitable for areas with high surrounding noise levels. So instead of using the directional patch arrays with a lot of side lobes that see, um, uh, see and connect to um, pretty much any surrounding access points out there, the starter dish uh, has highly focused beam that su simply suppresses the noise you know, and that cleaner radiation pattern um, eliminates those connections to the access points nearby. The mounting mechanism of the starter dish is very similar to that of the starter horn. So a simple V-bolt bracket for, uh, for a quick and easy installation and adjustment of the antenna aiming. And there are two bracket profiles to accommodate wider span of the pole widths as well. Now you can connect the Ubiquiti waveguide radios and Mimosa waveguide radios uh, by default since the starter dish is meant to be a uh, CP antenna primarily. However, you, you can also get an additional SMA adapter you know, if, you, if you have any other radios to connect to it. And this adapter is not part of the starter dish package. So just to reiter reiterate, the, the starter horn has this adapter in the package while the starter dish does not. And now on to our patch array sector antennas. So at the moment, we offer a number of array sectors, uh, two for the two gigahertz band with 14 and 17 dBi gain, one for the three gigahertz band and one for the five gigahertz band. And all of them have the uh, horizontal and vertical polarization and the RP SMA interface. So without exception, all array sector antennas we offer are equipped with our proprietary backshield technology. So the backshield is a frequency selective surface and it is integrated directly in the antenna body. Yeah. And it's designed to effectively suppress the back radiation in the azimuth plane. So you don't need to use any additional shielding or reflectors with these antennas, everything is in the package. So the collocation of our array sectors is a lot easier since they do not disturb each other. Array sectors um, are designed to have the same radiation pattern in both polarizations. Then that ensures the perfect coverage at the edges of the sector. Now, this is also an important feature for a sector antenna to deliver equal coverage in both polarizations, you know, making the antenna more reliable as you switch between the polarizations, especially for the customers at the edges of the sectors. And the graphs in this animation are telling you that in the whole useful bandwidth, the gain of our patch array sectors is completely stable. This is a feature truly unique and not easy to achieve with patch array antennas. The stability of the gain is important for reliable performance as you, as you switch between the channels. And you've seen at the beginning of the presentation uh, that curve, uh, the red and green curve graph, where, uh, where typical patch array has, has quite unstable gain over the bandwidth. Our patch array sectors on the contrary have very stable gain over the whole useful bandwidth. And we also innovate the mechanical design of, of the patch array sector. So the bracket of our array sectors is very robust and also extremely simple compared to the standard patch array sectors of other brands. And the, also here, the black colored bulbs have the surface treatment preventing the, uh, preventing the, the seizing of the brackets and extending their overall lifetime and reusability. So the array sectors with uh, RPSMA interface can easily connect to, to many radios commonly used in the WISP industry. Now with the, with the standard bracket, all it takes to connect the radio is to slide it until you hear it click and then put the hood on the top 
of the cable interface to protect it from the weather. And now a little bit about our integration platforms. So the S uh, station box Alumini is a small fa form factor enclosure that's suitable for, for IoT or other wireless applications. And it is made of solid aluminum, so it protects the circuit board from the outdoor elements and RF noise as well. And we also provide 3D files for, for printing of various insert boards that help you integrate the, the circuit boards of various manufacturers. And those are available in the download section on our webpage. So the station box is, um, it's very easy to install and connect. As you see from this animation, it only takes a few, uh, few minutes to attach the holder to, to the pole and even less to, to actually mount the station box onto it. So besides that, the mounting bracket is also made of aluminum, so it will last for a long time in all kinds of conditions. And of course, you can also mount the station box on a wall if that's, uh, if that's necessary. So the station box Alu is, uh, is our bigger integration platform that accommodates larger size boards or, or more smaller ones. It's really very free in terms of what you put in. So the space the station box Alu provides gives you a lot of options. And it is made of diecast aluminum and the paint on the surface is, is UV resistant. And when you see that red uh, insulation on, on the edge of, of the station box, that's uh, providing IP55 rating. So it will withstand and resist any weather conditions. Now, the plastic board with many options for the integra integration of the Microtech Alex or, or TP-Link board um, is also, also included. And for full compatibility list, you should check the, the data sheet of the product on our webpage. And you can also mount the, the station box on the pole or a wall. So at RF Elements, we, we do address the problem of RF noise by changing the paradigm of fixed wireless industry altogether. We are focused on innovation and are setting new industry standards for RF performance, noise rejection, and system scalability. And not only that, we also listen to our customers and these black bolts uh, with preventing the seizing of the bracket uh, are a proof of that, that we actually listen to our customers and try to, whenever we can, incorporate their feedback uh, in the next iteration of our products. And again, caring uh, not only about the wireless industry, but also, also what, we, what we do on this planet and, and we are trying to make it more sustainable by using ecological packaging on our products. One of the most frequent questions our customers have, where do I buy your products? So on our webpage, uh, directly on the landing page, circled in green on this slide, there is the stock locator. And when you get there, selecting the product you're looking for, you and, the re and your region, you will see uh, you will see the list of the distributors nearest to you. And another very common question we get is how far our antennas go. And since there are so many variables coming to, uh, you know, the to the answer to this question, really the best tool to answer it uh, with really good accuracy, really good estimate is the is the link calculator available on our webpage. So again, on the landing page, you see circled in green on the right, uh, there is the link calculator tab, uh, which when you click, it will bring you to. Uh, to this, uh, to the interface of our link calculator, where after choosing any antenna from our portfolio and setting all the rest of the parameters of the access point, the output power, the uh, the channel width, uh, the height and orientation, and so on, and the CPE settings as well, you will get a really good estimate of what coverage you can actually achieve. And as you see from the image, we're we're really showing you the real coverage, yeah? Because you can see different color uh, signifies a different MCS level. The, 
uh, the link is able to work with depending on the settings that it's uh, that it's set to mm, sometimes our customers ask well how do i become a distributor of your of your products and uh, you can apply to become the distributor of our products on our web page now this animation for some reason doesn't play but uh, on our web page uh, when you slide all the way down to the footer um, there is a there's a link to uh, which says become a distributor and it will take you to a questionnaire uh, which you know you can fill and afterwards we will contact you with further details and I would also like to invite you to join our online community. So we have rfelab.com, which is our online user forum, where uh, many WISPs have asked a lot of questions about our products, and you can either search through, uh, through these answers or ask your own questions. And then we also have RF Elements English, uh, which is a public um, user group uh, for, for people who use our products. And you can also ask your questions there if you want. So while I can be talking about our products uh, for a very long time, uh, probably mm, the, the most convincing uh, case is given by, by people like you, you know, your fellow WISPs. So we traveled around the world and interviewed a um, bunch of WISPs uh, about, um, well, how, what's their view on our antennas? How did our antennas work or didn't work for them? So I encourage you to check our YouTube channel and the WISP Traveler playlist, which features um, WISPs from all around the world sharing their experience with our products. And another YouTube channel, uh, or not a YouTube channel, but the playlist on our YouTube channel I would like to bring your attention to is Inside Wireless, which are very short two to three minute radio, I mean, videos where we explain all kinds of concepts from the world of RF engineering. So whether you are a seasoned WISP or just beginning, uh, these videos can be really useful to, to refresh or learn something new. Thank you for your attention and... I'm um, looking forward to, to see you in any following webinars we will have in the future. Generally, we do at least one webinar a month. So stay tuned to our social media and uh, have a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.